Oh! Ooh! Welcome <laughs> to the Harley and Josh show. This week we're going to be playing music from Ghosts of Men, Osmium Guillotine, Surfquake. We're going to listen about what Harley's been doing, boy. We've got a gig list and we're going to be talking about some musical industry and artistic things later on and everything. So stay tuned. Of course, we'll talk about what you're up to as well. I, I, I felt really bad by... Take it, uh, cutting off that song that uh, Mucha finished with. Um, uh, for anyone who who didn't hear the beginning bit, which was uh, "Thriller" by Michael Jackson. <laughs> Thriller. That was, I've been listening to that so much this weekend because yeah. we're that's actually in the set for Chart Attack this weekend. Nice, yeah, because you've got a gig coming up on twenty sixth, isn't it? Twenty. That's, yes, twenty sixth, yeah. which is at the Swan and Holbrook. Yes, um, so we're gonna be doing a Halloween. Lovely show little there. place, that. Yes, I like it there. And it's a lovely place. Yeah, I'm really yeah. looking forward to that. So, um, but yeah, so. I've been, been listening to that because there's, there's some really weird sections in that. Yeah. Um, random bars of like dotted fives and nice stuff like that, which, yeah, not obvious. So how have you been working it out by ear or you've been transcribing or? I've been working it out by ear and then I was writing down the odd parts. Um, so there's a a weird section the at the end of the chorus. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, that yeah. last one where it does dun 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 dun. Yeah, so everything's syncopated. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's kind of like a, it's a root flat six four flat seven second flat second back to the seven. Right. So what's that in Phrygian? It's yeah, but then you got you got a major second and a minor second next to each other, oh, yeah. which is just odd, and it, it's just. It's just, let's pick weird notes. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because Halloween, because I guess. Because chromaticisms. Nice. Yeah, well, so, that's cool. So, so you, you've been working that out in the shed, then, have you? Yes. Yeah, so I've. Uh, was that last week, or have you just been months of doing this? Uh, we've only had our first rehearsal for the, uh, for that song yesterday, um, yeah. which is weird that we've only really had one rehearsal for that. Um, but we've got quite good at learning because the way we work it is we all work off the same sheet. We can learn it at home. Uh, work it all out and then then bring it to the plate uh, mm-hmm. as long as we all know what key we're in um, that's always helpful to be the start one uh, mm. yeah we're taking a picture <laughs> if you ever we- if you ever hear us awkwardly stop and then carry on it's because we're just <laughs> taking, taking a picture of ourselves t- thank a thou thing yeah uh, <laughs> well, uh, where did you guys practice him uh, area 51 well cool so, um, yeah 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 we uh we we did that um and we are we're getting together tonight um in Guildford, but I'll talk about that bit a little bit later. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to talk about the, the sort of the thing I did last week, which took up most Ooh, of my week. Thing you did last week. Um, I worked for a, uh, a AV company, um, running a uh, conference for BT Openreach. Oh. Uh, I was running a. a thrilling, my friend. <laughs> it's it's such a weirdly different world to right. do conference like sound. You think sound is turning up faders. And making things sound louder, good, right. without ringing. And mm. that's essentially what you're doing when you're doing any sound job. But the mm. rules are so different. Um, so what kind of mics are you using for this kind of job then? So we were, we had, this thing, we had lots of wireless systems in central London. If anyone has ever used wireless systems in London, it's a nightmare. Because you've really got to make sure that you're on the right signals. You're, you're uh, restricted to certain channels, your licensed channels. Um... And then you've gone, then got to try and not get interference. Mm. So that was a real. Didn't, didn't the, like the military get involved with like wireless microphones and wireless technology a while back? Because it used to be, um, yeah. it was all you know wave. So it was yeah. the analog, but now it's mostly digital. Uh, we're still using analog, um, yeah. analog systems. Uh, there are digital wireless systems that are very good, but they're also very expensive. Right. Um, and then what's better? Good question. Mm. Digital is better, but it's not necessarily cost effective. Right. Okay. Um, especially as all the equipment's owned by by BT, so they they work within budgets. And why spend a th- four thousand pound on a system when they can spend mm. fifteen hundred pound? I don't know if that's the exact price, Do, but that's kind of the deal you're working with. And when they've got sixteen wireless systems mm. at once, and that's how many I had Crikey. to work with. We had ten handhelds. Is that all in Iraq? Yes. Yeah. Uh, they're all Sennheisers. Not so Iran. We, we, <laughs> yes, um, we we went to war on Iraq. Uh, I, I honestly, it was it was very complicated because you had to. I, had, I spent the whole of Monday wiring the system up, um, mm-hmm. and then took it to London and had to wire half of it back up again. What was the venue in London then? Uh, it was a, a outreach head office. Oh, okay. Um, so it's it's all. And this is part of synergy. 
Uh, this was with another company called Quatreus. Quatreus. Uh, um, who? It's a metal band. Yeah. Quatreus. <laughs> yeah. Atreyu. They um yeah they run a lot of uh, these the uh, these sort of conferences and stuff and it's like really interesting work. I said afterwards, I said, you know, your gains are in a completely different place. Your noise floor is completely different because mm. you're when you're doing sound on a on a stage, you're listening to people with a mic right next to them going, ah! <laughs> yeah, that bit, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but like, so uh, whereas you go on stage, this guy was talking like this. Hello and welcome to uh, BGM Range. We are going to be talking about this today and. Um, yeah. Stuff now stuff you tried doing things. that without getting feedback. Like yeah. you had gains. Yeah, noise floor. Time. You really have to feel hear the noise floor. And yeah. also, so this is in an office complex. Yes. Well, it was not an yeah. office. Um, so are there are a lot of fluorescent lights lights in there because um, kind of a lot. This of place wasn't. It was actually in their cafe. Oh, so right, it was right. quite a nice, well set up place. Was it being used? So you just get this. In the background uh, when somebody's making a cappuccino. <laughs> they did. They did shut it for the day. Luckily, Thank very God. similar to how uh, Worcester Park work. They've got their cafe but when they've got conferences they shut it off and put the cafe elsewhere right so um they, they mm. obviously this place is used quite a lot because they've got um projector screens and everything set up for that kind of thing so your your setup like how would you have it so you've got a desk would you have a, a, a computer with you as well um so i had a desk i had a computer with me for for playback um i took my laptop with me in case i want needed to do any intense sort of programming um for the desk because it's a dig- digital system and i didn't um there were some there were some problems in the way that we'd set it up. I wasn't aware that the tables would be numbered, and we had a microphone on each table, and the microphones were labeled didn't match up with the table numbers. Yeah, there were oh, microphones no. were labeled six to fifteen, right? When they should have been labeled one to seven, sort oh, of thing. No. So that was a um, uh, mathematical problem you have to it, do every single time yeah, you turn up a favorite. Although we did, Great. although we had these, as you can see. Uh, from the picture that you just took, I'm talking into a, a fluffy mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. We had multicolored ones of those, so we color coded everything oh, so we nice. could see it. So really cool to sort of work like that, um, mm-hmm. which was a great way to work. Um, uh, but there was a there, the way it was patched up meant that I was having to switch between pages of of, of faders, um, right. which I couldn't really foresee until I got there to the event. Oh, okay. I was saying afterwards, I said if I'd have, if we do the same event another day. I would run it completely differently, but with the information I had on the day before, we didn't. We had problems that we didn't know we had in, in previous sort of uh, takes. Mm. So we we worked with it and we made it through. Um, it went really smoothly for the most part. There was a few sort of sweaty brow moments mm-hmm. when, um, for example, we did a conference call over Skype with someone, which was uh, complicated because we had two Everybody. people on stage being interviewed by the audience who had mics that they were asking these questions. And we had a third guy up a hill in Scotland in a Skype call. <laughs> and it worked, the, the audio, the signal worked Just almost... a random dude on a hill. I don't know how I got up here! <laughs> <laughs> well, he was doing, he was working for outreach, putting in some cables or something like that. got great signal, though! <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that was it. Great <laughs> signal in the middle of nowhere. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, but the problem we had was wind. So I had to really ride the fader. Every time you got a gust of wind, I had to bring the fader down. Amazing. Which you don't have a problem with that indoors. No. And we were indoors and still having that problem. Unless you're serving beans. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So yeah, that was that was that was the the sort of the big chunk of my week. Um, and it was a lot of prep for that. It was a lot of travelling uh, mm. to London and back. And um, all long week, so you out. didn't stay down there. We did. Yeah. You did. We, so we you stayed. got a hotel. We got a hotel. Not yep. just your hammock in the back of your van. No, no. Uh, I didn't even have to drive. It was great. Nice. Um, so yeah, so I, I got the hotel, um, which was fine. You yeah. know, you expect to get a, when you're spending. Dirt cheap. It's, it's nice to just sleep on a floor, like, and not yeah. have to drive home a lot of the time, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's mm. uh, they're they're very strict on that in their policy. Like the guy when we finished, we travelled home via the train. The driver for the event had to stay in a hotel overnight because he'd been working a long day. Yeah. And their company policy meant they weren't allowed. Time. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's nice that they've got that kind of thing in place. Mm. He wasn't so glad about the fact that he had to stay in a hotel over one more night when he could have spent the time home with his family. But, yeah, um, course, yeah. you know, at the same time, he'd rather do that than fall asleep on the way home. Yeah, with and a, die and half time again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeez. So, yeah, that's that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> deep. Yeah, yeah, so, like, um, what time... What, so you did Monday to Thursday? Monday to Wednesday. Monday to Wednesday. So, of course, yeah. I saw you on Thursday. Yeah, so we, um, I, I managed to... The, the Monday was, at, was, was local... We were just prepping, so I managed to still do rock project in the evening, which I really enjoyed. Um, 
And speaking of which, Thursday, my main job was Rock Project. We also, um, we had a, a singer actually in the studio in the morning, uh, Area 51, a singer called Lexi. Uh, she did a Disney song, and I can't remember what film it was, but it was absolutely beautiful. It was oh, great. I wasn't in there for that bit. So, um, oh, that was in uh, Area 51 in the morning. Oh. Um, and then we had Rock Project in the evening. I don't know about you, I really enjoyed it. It was the last one of the term. Yeah. Uh, and it well, was just half a really. Term, isn't it? Yeah, half term. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, a real nice sort of feel good uh, session to f- end. end End the, uh, the 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 stint long stint with so yeah. I was really happy about that because what is it? it's an eight week term I think next isn't it yeah it's gonna be a long one it's gonna be one of the longest ones and I've yeah yeah I've got a lot of work to do for that so yeah mm. um, so that finished off your week that finished off my week should we talk about the the, the Friday we had together or oh, should we um, the Friday we had together we had a Friday Wasn't together it a beautiful Friday it was we so, so well so we had a gig as well afterwards oh yeah that okay so let's talk about the gig let's not talk about <laughs> yeah, our, yes. our, our, our romantic trip our, to the Pennines yes so we um had a gig with Hopping Hopefuls. Yay! It was the first time, apparently, have they played... Oh, no. Hoppy and the Harleys. Andy's Harley played... And the Hoppies. <laughs> uh, drinking <laughs> Hop House, <laughs> as we have done before. On one leg. Yeah, exactly. Hopping about, drinking Hop House with Harley and the Hoppy Hop. <laughs> You're right. You look like... <laughs> oh, he's having a seizure. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. Now. Sorry. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, that was a great gig. I've not played the Duke of York. I think... I hope Fools did, did our first gig under that name at the Duke of York. Yeah, it was, yeah. Um, but I wasn't able to make Public it. Show which, anyway. Rich was on bass yeah, and said that night. Which, um, and I saw some of the videos afterwards and it looked really good. Uh, but we, uh, I missed out on that. So I was really looking forward to this one, hoping it had so the you, same so energy. You've never as it did. G- gigged at the Duke of York? Not with Hopefuls. Oh, sorry. I played I there say. before with other yeah, bands. But, so. uh, and I really enjoyed it. It was great. Really good fun. Um, nice crowd, wasn't it? Really nice crowd. Really Came responsive. Out of nowhere. Yeah, they, it was kind of quiet and then we started playing and lots of i saw a lot of mates turn up rainer was there jamie was there yeah. uh nick Josh keeble and, um, and bromwin uh from yeah. um sky. connor adams and, connor and adams, sky, yeah. all of that kind of deal so and and Rowan. yeah Reno um, and Rowan. it was just a really enjoyable night uh we also had guest saxophonist with us that evening uh the wonderful yeah, nick bettini Bettini. yeah what a um, wonderful player came all the way from london to uh to see See Andy, uh, yeah. cause they're, they're they're um old friends, aren't old they? friends, mm. um, and Set Andy on the bench is, like bookends. Andy got mentioned, or her father got mentioned in a book that he's re- he's written uh, called Just Play. Now that's not that's coming out in a few weeks' time. Yeah, that's going up on uh, Amazon, and yep. yeah, so you can get it on the Kindle and everything, but also those hardbacks. Yeah, it just looks really interesting. It's he's a of, he's a really good um, coach. Yeah, yeah, mm. uh, and talks a lot uh, about kind of the the psychological uh, aspect of being a musician, both pres- mm-hmm. professionally and just, just personally, of mm-hmm. how it can be therapy, but also it can be quite a stressful uh, situation to be in if if, um, if your mind's not in the right place for exactly. it. And getting your mind into the right place for it, and that's Very that's a difficult. real big deal for musicians. Yeah, he's also crowdfunding it as well. I'm not sure if he's completely finished with the crowdfunding yet, um, mm. but you know it will be getting published quite soon. It's a lot of it is to do with... I was talking to him about um, how it how you get your your um, books published. Yeah. So I was like, is it the same as like on, on Spotify or on iTunes, you can get yourself an aggregator or something mm-hmm. like this, like TuneCore or DistroKid, uh, which we'll talk more about later, actually. Um, or do you literally have to have a publisher who will, you know, distribute uh, your music and sort out your rights for... Uh, distribute your book, sorry. Yeah. And, and sort out your rights for you. Um, and he was saying, yeah, it was, it's quite similar. There are aggregators... Uh, like tune call but for for books yeah uh, so you don't have to be signed to a publisher or have a deal mm-hmm. to be able to release a book which is nice I'd, I'd not thought about that before and i thought that's nice it sort of shows that we still do have freedom of uh, expression yeah. yeah you're not just limited by money it's an interesting thing about that though being a self-published uh, musician or or writer mm. um Auteur. or being a signed musician or writer you mm. know um but is there potentially a a change in the the quality, um, or to have someone else be able to mediate what you what you've written, what you what you've recorded, um, can that help produce a better product? And will yeah. that name carry that product as a as a better product? Yeah, whether um, it has yeah, like like if you had Penguin behind you or something like yeah, this, you know, yeah. do people suddenly think, oh, it's immediately a better book? I want an album re- like released by Penguin. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'll have one by Ladybird probably. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you have got a new album on the, the way. Fisher Press. See if they'll see if they'll publish it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, guys, it's very child friendly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I've got uh, props on him. Uh, I think he's using Kickstarter, but I'm not completely sure. Um, but yeah, I'm links a, in the description. Links in the description. Hashtag description. Um, just uh, so you guys are playing along, we we are playing bingo today. We are. Don't forget that we are playing bingo. We're always playing bingo. Always throughout our lives in our sleep. Um, but if you could like, if you uh, check out our Facebook page, Harley, can you post up the picture of the bingo card for everybody to see, so oh. that everybody can just basically check out what we talk about every single week, and uh, you can get yourself your own little little uh, little personalised jingle that you can use for your like. Way high. You know what I mean? You can, ooh, you can use it for your ringtone or whatever. Ooh. Let's see um, that. Yeah, I'll I'll show you last week's one just because because uh, you weren't here, Harley. Okay. So I want to get your live reaction to this one. Uh, this is for Theo Bennett, uh, who is a student at the Rock Project. Theo, Theo, pick up guitar, sing. Practice the scales, pick up the load on the strip. I, I actually got James Hetfield to sing that one for him as well. Oh man, well done. Yeah, that's, right. That's pretty sick. Well done. Yeah, I mean, he was expensive, and I'm now very much like two hundred thousand pounds in the hole. But you know, good luck, Theo. Make yourself I'm sure you're a fantastic guitarist. That's when you not grow a bad up. hourly for rate, me. is it? Yeah, exactly. And that was like an eight second song. <laughs> Uh, anyway. Awesome. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'd like to show you uh, one of the tracks that I was bopping my head to on Saturday. Oh, please do. Um, so yeah, this is "Eye for an Eye" by Ghosts of Men. Check it out on iTunes and stuff. I'm for an eye for. That no, was "Eye for an Eye" by Ghosts of Men. See like a bit effects. <laughs> it's a bit of effects popping in the that like. fourth time really caught us off guard oh, yeah exactly <laughs> oh no we're back in but yeah so that was uh, yeah so that's available on iTunes on Spotify and all that sort of stuff um, I got to see Ghosts of Men uh, last Saturday as it was Adam's 40th birthday the drummer's nice. 40th birthday and he just had a massive like house party bash at his place in Halstead Sweet. and I was lucky enough to get an invite it was quite exclusive oh. and so I went up there with uh, with Josh Carr uh, at least from Hot Tramp went uh, with his lady Sophie and my lady Frankie just went up there and just like really enjoyed what a wonderful like nice. lineup of bands he put on I gotta see if I can find all of the all of the bands that were playing but I, what's your finding that I was gonna say that um I had a little post rock project workout a few weeks ago it's probably about a few months ago now right um and I put on Ghost of Men's album it's a very really good workout album yeah it's got a lot of energy and I can just be like yeah. Uh, breathe in, uh, breathe out. Yeah, yeah. Just reminding myself to breathe during this. <laughs> um, yeah, it was good. But yeah, I know we saw some really wonderful bands. Uh, awesome. There was uh, there was uh, the Sweet Chunks band played. Nice. Bees. I like that. Um, Doos and McDoos. Uh, we had Semantics. Um, I'm trying to remember who else. Polly Haynes. She just nailed it. Of course, she, she always really does. Nailed it. She was awesome. She had her and Tom Ayers and and uh, and a smaller band that I'm used to seeing her with actually because she didn't have the horn section and stuff. Oh, okay. But also she does solo stuff. But yeah, just really nailed it. Like fantastic performances um, from everybody. It was just all in like Cosmic Puffin who uh, do the the stuff yeah. on Mersey Island. Rusty and and the gang um, were all um, chipped in for like the marquees and the decoration, the PA everything and it was all for Adam's 40th like you could see his face was just like oh everybody's been so nice to me <laughs> why Aww. but yeah um so yeah it looked like a cosmic puffing kick which was great um but yeah I think I'm trying to think about how many people there must have been there I reckon there was probably a hundred and something people there wow. just to like uh not to talk down his house but it's a normal house it's not like you know he's got a mansion or something like that so obviously he's gonna have a gig uh, there but it's like a hundred people of, is a lot to fit in a house yeah 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 usually you know I think there's probably even more than that I reckon but like they did this awesome thing which I'd not seen before they did this thing called no nonsense where they basically like got somebody in to cling film the carpet so you could have like loads of people around and it's oh. like like fitted to your carpet so no matter what you spill on there you can you don't have to worry about people taking their shoes off or anything you just you know just traipse around the house that's great right genius idea I don't think I've ever done a house party where someone hasn't spilled a drink yeah exactly and you're just like oh, I can't enjoy myself because of the carpet yeah but direct quote from Sophie she was just like oh the floor's all squidgy 
It's a carpet, but it's got it. Yeah, it felt like the gym mats used to have in PE. Ah, that's awesome. You remember? Anyway, sorry, I'm talking about carpets too much. Um, But yeah, uh, it got to Ghost of Men set, and bless him, like they they're like controlling the crowd on a rowdy night where it's your birthday is hard, and they really did it. It was so good. But also because it was his, it was Adam's birthday. Um, it was just he'd just been like given so many drinks oh. and everyone was just like hey you go down this hey you go down that he played with like three or four other bands as well yeah um, and yeah and then Peter the singer Cleggy was just like drunk as well so they're both just like oh yeah it's nice because like we don't we we talked about it before you know you don't mm. tend to perform drunk no. you know it's no. it's uh, it's different though when it's your birthday right yeah when People expect you to be drunk on your birthday, and it's also all your mates there, so you can mm. have a bit of fun, let a bit loose, and you can have a you you can enjoy being drunk yeah. and not worrying about. But the you thing know, is, like he was playing like the whole time, and it's his house. Uh, I was like, no idea how you're holding it together right now, man. He's like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I really? said, that was the well, first thing he said to me when I, when I turned up. I was like, thanks so much for inviting me, man. He was like, I didn't. I was trying to keep numbers down. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the Facebook invite. I can see it right here. It's like, oh yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, like it was great. They, they they had the best banter on stage the whole night. Yeah. Um, and during that song, Eye for an Eye, they had all their mates up on stage. Uh, it was just, yeah, they were wonderful. It was just really nice to, because I didn't have a gig, so I got to be able to go up and see some of my friends play. I got to talk to you know wonderful promoters like the guys from Cosmic Puffin. I got to talk to wonderful musicians and just random people that would on substances uh, yeah. I'm just because like, I was driving so I was completely stone cold sober not had a drink so I was just like listening to people just like you know what man I love you I was like sorry who, who are you <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm Adam it's my birthday <laughs> <laughs> payback <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. but uh, it was just some random guy that would just go around and just sort of you know give you a little little friendly punch on the shoulder and just go I love you <laughs> I was like thanks man what do you want <laughs> <laughs> so yeah don't do drugs kids um because you'll end up being that guy at a party that uh, i think you stormed the stage at one point and stood on someone's pedal which uh, stopped the whole thing oh really <laughs> oh so what that was, happened like twice and at the end of the ghost of men's set they had to stop early because somebody lobbed a can at them the can went straight all over his pog and his big muff and just cut the whole thing out oh. and they, we couldn't fix it i was like the only sober person there and i was just like nah dude I, you're going to have to actually get this looked at now. And he just said, whoever threw the Magnus can, you're very accurate. <laughs> he didn't have a go at him. <laughs> so like, yeah. I'm sure no one did that. it through any malice. It's one of those things just yeah. the moment takes you in a... In a yeah. But I just saw it happen in slow motion like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, water damage can can really kill pedal bo- pedals like that. You can't <laughs> always fix them. <laughs> just like that. It hurts. Oh, uh, I love the look when you when we played that song on uh, uh, on Friday and you look <laughs> back Friday at me after York, going, yeah. Yeah, and, you looked, just and you look back to see me right and people laughing your and you're just like you know <laughs> uh huh mm. you're not going to be able to ever not do that if you ever don't do that we'll just be like hey man dude what come on sort come it up hey get, <laughs> get off a stage <laughs> you're fired <laughs> we always say the only reason why we give Dougal. Uh, a microphone with oddball is so we can heckle us. <laughs> <laughs> Go home. Yeah. yeah, great. I like it. Which one's the odd one? That's usually a yeah. We always say it's, that's the most common question with oddball and shifty twins. Who are the twins uh, and who's yeah. the odd one? Yeah, none of you look alike. <laughs> <laughs> and our and our response is often, if you have to ask, dude, come on, come on, it's don't just obvious, leave, isn't it? Just leave. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I so. What else have I found out this week? So, like, uh, this week I'm, uh, I've got a little bit of time off because I have, like, two new jobs where I'm working in primary schools in the local area doing Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Nice. So, uh, we've got Wednesday still at Cobbleston coming up this uh, this Wednesday at Rock Project. Yep. Um, uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to having a little bit of time at home so I can start working uh, more on the promo for my album coming up. Nice. I'm also writing some more songs for another album uh, just because you I've never- gotta, I'm still young. I need to, <laughs> while I've got creativity in my, bla- in my veins, I've just got to keep going. If you got it, yeah. flaunt it. Exactly. Um, speaking of new music, we got given... Oh, we got our first... Well, actually, no, I think we've had many joint gifts. But it was together um, where Dan, who we were just talking about, Dan Dolman, um, 
from War Waves gave me their well gave us their new CD, um, which is just got some wonderful tracks in it. I've had it on the van. Yeah, uh, you haven't had a listen to it yet. I haven't. So no, do you want, you do you want to borrow it? Uh, if I could, yeah, that'd yeah, be great. Of course, yeah, man, I'll pass it back. I got got a long drive tonight, so uh, I'm oh, gonna put yeah. it on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, probably, I'll give it back to you then. Um, yeah, some really wonderful songs in there. Lion's Head we played uh, two weeks back on the show, which we were very impressed with. Um, they've got an album launch coming up soon. I believe it's. 24th of November I'm actually I'm going to have to double check that uh, and uh, so yeah if you can get your hands on this album trust me this because uh, I believe they've got war, uh, so it's War Waves and Radio Orwell um, that are playing it's, I think it's going to be here at the Smokehouse um, but they it's, the, the EP is going to be great and you're going to find out why it's going to be super special uh, trust me um, but uh, yeah like, yeah because it's it's one of those EPs that I think it's going to go down in local in 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 local music history. Yeah, uh, yeah they've had December a lot of December seventh. It's it. going to be December seventh. They've got Gold Bloom and Sleep Well. Um, the the EP is going to be called Be Well. So Friday seventh of December. Entry is five quid. I believe you can get it um, uh, in in advance. But uh, yeah, that, that's going to be one not to miss, especially if like because it sounds quite REM, it sounds uh, mm. quite Smithsy, quite quite like the Cures. It's got that kind of eighties goth vibe about it, but brought into a kind of more modern uh, Snow Patrol esque kind of thing. I suppose Snow Patrol aren't modern anymore. I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. But Who's yeah, I, I I hear all that in what you're. What you're what you're saying from yeah. from the songs that I've heard? And yeah, there's lots of really little chimey, chimey riffs that are, you know, sort of circa Johnny Marr. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think you know if you're into that and you're into sort of a bit of shoegaze, yeah, check out War Waves. They're going to be releasing some really cool stuff coming up soon. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, a great sounding album as well. Yeah, well, it's I, I, really I well recorded. They, who they? I got think they recorded it with Backwater. So I think Steve Mann did uh, did a lot of the re- recording. Mm. Um, and he's got some lovely equipment. Um, he's a manly, and he's very manly uh, and very Stevely. Very Stevely. <laughs> Steve-esque uh, um, uh, yeah so I want yeah. to uh, also give a shout out to Hot Tramp I actually have heard their new singles they're going to be <sighs> dropping soon nice I got, a, I got a special listen today thank you Josh Carr um, but I'm not allowed to play them yet I can't oh, show them yet so I'm going to be playing them next week though are we getting an exclusive play oh yeah after they get the release because they've got it's a, they're going to be a Halloween release and it's Halloweeny Spooky. this weekend, so we you know we can't play it until everybody else has, has had a chance. Because yeah, like I I'm not sure, but they might be my new favourite Hot Tramp songs. Nice, they, that's but, great. They, um, they they recorded somewhere different. I, I keep they keep telling me where they recorded, and I keep forgetting. But it, yeah, it wasn't here at Punch, so it sounds different to the uh, the, the um, Sermon for the Non-Believer album. Um, the production is is different. It's it's much heftier, if that makes sense. It's hefty. It's, like yeah, that. there's there's very big drum sounds in there. Um, Lewis's guitar just sounds just crushing. Mm. He's crushing it as usual. Um, and you know, uh, Josh's voice sounds great. He's got like it's it, the way it's been it's been mixed. It's it's much less toppy uh, you can real hear the growl in his voice a bit more which is nice but yeah I actually I, their, their songwriting is maturing a lot more nice. uh, I'm hearing like you know, in they've got a song called Ain't It A Scream and it's got this fantastic riff in it which could quite easily just go on and on and on and on and on yeah. and it, it you know they, 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 they hang on it which is a good thing in a song I find you know if you've got a riff and you want to play it loads just play it loads and then just you know uh, layer over the top of it mm. um, but then they you know they'll, they'll incorporate the riff they'll incorporate the motif in a, in a bridge section uh, with some stops and things like this so that'll be you know it, I can't wait to hear this yeah you're going to really like it next week but I've got oh. to choose which one to play though I think it's probably going to be Demon in Me um, which is a really good live song to see. Um, but yeah, so uh, I want to quickly just uh, touch on, uh, in, in the halfway point here, mm. um, we we had the Facebook game going on uh, this week. Um, I've Well, oh, actually, please, yeah. it was only really uh, since yesterday, and yeah. it's been one of the most popular ones we've done, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to actually check it. I'm a bad person. So I'm going jo- to join in and read some of the comments uh, as you're reading some out. Yeah, so. sure. So uh, this week's one was show us a band with a body part in the name. Um, and there's been some vulgar ones, I've got to say. <laughs> there's been some real vulgar ones. Uh, mostly from Rob Lewis, our guest from last week. Um, good one from Rainer, Rainer Vandell. Take it off your, your bingo cards, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, crazy Arm. Like that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, local one from Scott Norman, Fisty Cuffs. Of course. Duh. Of course. Now an anniversary. Um 
<laughs> oh, Matt Catling ligament. I like that. My dad's got one that's got quite a lot of likes, actually. What's that one? Urethra Franklin. Oh, God. There's not even a real one. There's not <laughs> even a real one. Uh, five Finger Death Punch. Of course. Of there course. There we go. Yeah, we go. Uh, heart. <laughs> I just saw the one you were talking about, Rob. Uh, oh, he's just... Uh, yeah. All right. We can say that one live on Okay, air. here's the thing. Royal Blood. Does that count as a body part? Uh, it's part- yeah, it's, part- it's inside you, isn't it? I guess. No, shut up. Um, so, Willie Nelson. <laughs> that one's from Rob Lewis. Well done. Well done. Um, another one from Rob Lewis. Hole. Now, Can we say that? A hole is an absence of something in the middle of something that it is. Like, a hole is the only thing Face you describe hole. that you're describing the, the absence ab- of yeah, something. that's true. <gasps> that's... Another one that got a great reaction, Victor, from Victoria Bennett, last last time's uh, bingo winner, uh, Ringo Starr. Both of those could be a part. Of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, good lord! Um, talking heads, I like that one. Yeah, there's a lot of head ones. Um, yeah. Radiohead from Cat Gibbs and Motorhead as well. Yeah, American Head Charge. What do you think an armadillo would say about that? What? I don't know, just something about that. It's quite funny. Good. What? Uh, <laughs> I don't understand you sometimes, man. Uh, what we got? Um, Jerry and the Pacemakers. <laughs> that's great. Is that? Yeah, I don't uh, think that counts, Rob, because that's it's not a body part. It's something you put in afterwards. So, yeah, there are rules here. We have rules. Oh, that's a clever one. What's that? Temple of the Dog. Yeah, he's done a lot of temple ones. That's a good one. Yeah, like Nickelback. It. It's quite good. Yeah. yeah. Stiff Little Fingers is just, yeah. I, I, I want to say... Like, Stiff Little Fingers is one of the bands that got me into punk uh, mm. back in the day. Um, back all, Was it Andy's Records that used to be where yeah. Subway was? Wait. Uh, there was it, so, on Queen Street. Yes. Yeah. So, there's where the Subway is uh, now in Ipswich. There's uh, Music World. And I think there was an Andy's Records there before. Which later moved to the Butt Market. That's it, yeah. yeah. But I got my first Sex Pistols album from there. Nice. Um, obviously, never mind the B word. And, uh, and uh, my mum was like, oh, if you like that, then listen to Stiff Little Fingers. Um, so, yeah, thank nice. you for, for making me remember them. Darren Ferry, you win. No, oh, yes. You win. win. A, you win nothing. But nothing. You win pride. You win pride <laughs> that you won. Yeah. I, I remember Andy's records. I felt, that's where I bought the album Toxicity. That's where I first saw the... Um, Oh, crikey. I think it was, the, it was a Dream Theatre poster that stays with me to this day. And it's just a, uh, it's a head cut off and it's like a brain maze. Yes. Uh, it was yeah. a, it's not Metropolis, is it? It's something else. I think it's actually from a live DVD or something. Yeah. Uh, they I, had great posters in there. I remember when I went to see um, uh, Dream Theatre that for like the 10 minutes before they played, all of their album art had been made into like moving animations. Oh, great. So there was like there was someone theater. running around the maze and stuff like that. That's and I, I thought that was, that was really clever, like how they kind of brought brought their still art from across the years to life. Yeah, I like that. And had it on a big projection, which was really cool. So uh, talking of uh, talking of, uh, of of record stores and 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 recordings and things like this, um, we're, we're doing in this section. I'd like to talk about some music news. Music news. Newsy music. Music news. Okay. Um, just, 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 just chop that jingle right there. <laughs> Cut it, print it, sell it. Um, so yeah, about a month ago, you probably heard about this. Uh, Spotify made it um, uh, able for you to upload your music directly to Spotify now. Right. So uh, you don't have to go through uh, an aggregate like we were talking about earlier okay, with TuneCore yeah. or DistroKid uh, or anything like this. So that sort of raised a lot of questions of sort of like, yeah, well, why would where where is it going yeah i mean it's kind of like what no, so why would an artist do this um and you know what about the other streaming platforms that's it then so is it a case of you upload directly to to spotify, directly to spotify and it's just yeah. it's spotify exclusive which i mean you know figures show that was it uh, spotify has only like 38 percent of the global market share in which streaming is, which is quite it's a, a high, lot it's a big shot it's a it's a big um, do they have the largest share? Big share but it looks like it doesn't it yeah, i think it is because if um but, you know, so it is the largest share, but still you are missing out on a lot of others. Um, uh, so in terms of like Apple Music, Google yeah. Play, Amazon. But until now, most music has been Pandora. available on all platforms, I guess. What's that, sorry? I guess in, of recent, uh, until now, music, generally if some a song has been available on most platforms. Yeah, and yeah. And it's been within, I would say it's within the artist's interest to have it available on all platforms. Mm. 
Because yeah, but they've they've changed this now. So there is a uh, uh, there is a, a, a recent um, uh, change. They have now acquired Spotify. Have now acquired a minority stake in DistroKid. So okay. it's a passive investment thing. So they've like uh, so now that they uh, own a part of. Uh, DistroKid, they are actually now making it so that you can upload straight to Spotify and DistroKid will distribute that off to Apple Music. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so they're kind of like cutting out, they're not cutting out the middle of the man, they're just they're buying be- the middle man. <laughs> I guess, yeah, they're becoming the distributor. Uh, uh, yeah. They're a distribution service that distributes to other places. It's almost like if you put your, your CD into HMV and then they suddenly, you know, disperse that out to other stores. But if HMV owned a part of those stores so they got a bit of their profits back so yeah. i don't know it's really strange but I, the thing is apparently they don't actually they have a passive stake um in DistroKid, so they can't actually change how they run the company so it's kind of the ethical things there is like okay so it, it's kind of like uh, owning the entire pot or something yeah so that you know you'll upload your music there and uh, will it will it just be will they focus mostly on spotify uh will distro kid you kind of like not give so many people from other uh, streaming services as many kind of plays or whatever. Yeah, and I don't know if this is connected with other news for me being a podcast fan. Um, Spotify have also struck a deal with Acast that might have some stakes within. Yeah. Just, it might have yeah. some taken kind of over, thing. man, taken over. Um, because for a long time, a lot of podcasts weren't available on Spotify, including ours. Mm. Um, but it's, it's, and it now may become possible that you can listen to us on Spotify, which would be great for us. Yeah. Um, but a lot of time, for podcasts. a long time. Um, you can I, find us on iTunes, Harley and Josh Show. Yeah. iTunes, we're on uh, Podcast Addict, all the major yeah. podcasting apps. So soon we'll be on Spotify, really. We're also on Google Podcasts as well. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, well, but, well, with this DistroKid deal, we might even be able to do that with the podcast. We might yeah. be able to upload our, our podcast straight to Spotify. But, you know, like you say, Acast has uh, been working really well for us, hasn't it? Well, we've, uh, we, been, we don't. Uh, we don't deal directly with Acast, um, is, yeah, but so we, we are available on Acast, but we're not an exclusive. Hmm. Um, well, the, the crazy thing about Spotify is apparently uh, 20,000 songs are uploaded to Spotify per day. So That's a lot. It's a lot of songs, isn't it? So try Bear in mind, they like, stay up there as well. It's not yeah. like... Um, so there's... And was it? So they're breaking down what this actually does, what this actually helps. So uh, apparently 50% um, of the profits from a song streamed on Spotify um, will uh, go to the artist if you uh, direct upload it. So, oh, so okay, if you, so, so there's an you get 50%. There, there is a... Um, there, there is a charge there. Well, so, there's, you know, if but we there's get, an investment like, for, the, for to go direct to Spotify because mm. if you're going for another company, it's going to be a lot less than that. Mm, well, yes and no, because with TuneCore, you pay a flat-out fee Mm. That you're like okay, and then and then you get all the profits back basically. So, oh, okay, yeah. So they just you kind of like mine everybody for money. It's kind of like insurance, you know. Everybody pays a flat rate, and you just get paid out more if you've kind of done more. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um. But uh. So that's you know if you're going direct to Spotify, that's what you get. However, um, if you are on a uh, if you have a publisher like Merlin, um. Or if you are on an indie label or on Universal, Sony, or Warner, you get 52%. Oh, so okay. it's kind of strange because obviously the if you get like an 80-20 deal like you have with yeah. like a like a normal like record deals, um, then you probably so so if so let's say you got 10 grand from streams on Spotify, mm-hmm. be, you'd be lucky. <laughs> um, uh, so if you break that down, Spotify would keep 48 thousand if they were on the 52 percent so yeah. spotify would keep forty eight thousand. you'd get five thousand two hundred but that wouldn't be you that would be the record label and you would get 20 percent of that yeah and just to put this into, no you get 80 percent of that sorry to put this into perspective um it was on a, it was on the quiz last thursday uh rock project wasn't it uh-huh. um not point no yeah i don't know if this is like flat rate for everyone i think it's just or, average it's average i think it's average yeah. average payout per song per stream of one song which is minimum of 24 seconds mm-hmm. i remember that from the wolfpack album mm-hmm. um they <laughs> yeah you get 0.0046 cents per stream yeah and I think that's they they are still the highest paying of yeah. all the streaming services. I don't think it, I thought it was one of the no, lowest. No, I, I remember seeing a whole thing with, with mm. and I thought it was on the lowest. No, but maybe it's changed. If you think about it, like you say, global market share, they have kind of the highest stake there. Yeah, and a lot of other places, you know, people just don't use it so much. They just don't pay out as much. Spotify have been sued 
by a lot of people yeah. for not paying fairly. Mm. Um, there was a story of some um, quite well-known artist, like American country singer, someone big, um, went to the lawyer and went, I got paid £1,600 for from Spotify last year and had hundreds of thousands, hundreds mm-hmm. of thousands of streams. It's like, what's going on there? Yeah, exactly, man. Um, well, you and know, the lawyers but- didn't believe him because it was that low. So there's the so there there it is bit of music news for this week. Uh, check out that Spotify uploader. See if it's right for you. Do you know um, if this song's available on Spotify? Uh, this next song is available on Spotify. Well, there we go. Uh, band I saw at Adam's fortieth. Happy birthday, dude! Um, I was really happy to see them called Osmium Guillotine. They're from Colchester. They're usually a five piece, but for Adam's birthday, two of them couldn't make it, and they oh, were like, shame. "Screw it, we'll still play it." Oh, that's Three nice. of them, which is awesome. Was um, James Balcom there? What's that? James Balcom. No idea. Somebody I have on, on Facebook who plays with these guys. I'm right. not sure if, he's, if he was the... Is he a guitarist? I believe so, Glasses yeah. and a hat? Long hair? No. no. The, the drummer uh, was wonderful. He looked like a ginger James Bonham. John Bonham, sorry. James, That's I think it was his kid. awesome. Um, and yeah, his, but his double kick pedal was great because they played a song, this song, um, which is called He Played Rock and Roll, and it's dedicated to Lemmy from Motorhead. And you can really hear it sounds like Overkill from Motorhead. It's, nice. There's loads of Motorhead references in this track as oh. well. So, like, points to you. If you get it. Yeah, here we go. Who's that? Uh, James Balcom. That's James yep, Balcom. That's He's a great guy, yeah. drummer. Check out his double kick pedal in this one. It's called, played, it's called He Played Rock and Roll by Osmium Guillotine. Check it out. That was He Played Rock and Roll, tribute to Lemmy from Osmium Guillotine. So now I'd like to get onto the last section of our show. Uh, new little new little jingle for you. Thing I thought about this morning. That jingle. was a thing I think about this morning. Eh? Oh, it's a thing I thought about this morning. Uh, ticket resale. Okay. How do you feel about this? Because, was it? Ticket resale in the UK is a £1 billion industry. Wow. Just, just the resale of tickets, not just... Just selling tickets. As in resale. buying tickets, selling buying them tickets, on. Selling them on. And about five hundred million pounds of that is music events. Yeah. So that's like people like uh, uh, Seatway, Via Gogo, and StubHub. And uh, it's 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 get me in, but I keep looking at it as get mine. <laughs> get mine. Get me in. I want to get mine. Uh, it's fun. Um, so yeah, but uh, so back in April, uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, these companies were actually given action by the government to say like you are not actually uh, fitting with the Consumer Rights Acts from okay. like 1986 or something. Um, so you need to change your ways. Uh, I believe uh, StubHub seemed to kind of hold that hold the toe the line and you know try and you know make it so that people didn't mark up tickets so much but yeah. get me in seat wave and via gogo are under a lot of pressure and they may be getting shut down uh, i think it's the, the the cma i think they are it's an organization they're actually chasing them to get them proper shut down across europe uh, including live uh, was it um live uh no i've forgotten what the company's called mm. but anyway big companies wanting them to get shut down what do you think about t- reselling tickets well, should it be allowed that's ticket touting isn't it Mm-hmm. It's and as much it's making it's making tickets more expensive for the consumer, but that money's not going to the artist or the team that make the mm. event. You know, if a, if a band is charging thirty five quid for a ticket, like Arctic Monkeys were, um, mm. and somebody's selling them on for one hundred and fifty quid, yeah, uh, because they just want to make it to profit. Do you think that's immoral, or do you think it should be illegal? I I I think I yeah I. Don't know as much about it, so I, I, uh, I feel that you should buy your ticket straight from the artist or from from the, dis- the the ticket distributor that they approve of, that they they choose, and with that money that you make from the um, and you know, so you know that the money you're spending is going towards, towards the, the, artist, the event, yeah, you know. But the thing is, like, it it, yeah. it goes down to our general rights as a citizen of a country to be able to buy something and sell it on for how much, much we want whether it's a ticket whether it's uh whether it's you know an old cd or an old playstation or something like this mm-hmm. you know you have the right to be something to go no i want 150 pounds for this even though i paid 35 pounds for it how annoyed would you be if you wanted to get a ticket a train ticket into london and they were like oh no all these tickets on this train carriage are sold hmm. well they're not sold we've sold all these train tickets to that company there 
Hmm. Now you can buy it off them for an extra ten pounds, yeah, which is what people do, and it's, it's a similar it's, kind of thing as what the Spotify thing is going. Yeah. on. Just, you know, it'll, you know, you, or you got to pay a premium to buy it from someone else. But you know, uh, it, it it brings into a lot of questions, uh, um, you know, about whether you have the have the right to go and stand next to a queue of people going into a, a show because they've made it, you know, and say, you know, oh, tickets here, tickets here, bought and sold. But mm. the thing is, you know, they've made it so that. A lot of big concerts, um, like you know, Rolling Stones are doing it, Muse are doing it, Ed Sheeran's doing it, where you have to have like a wristband and photo yeah. ID that go along with it, and and you also have to say to people where the um, you know where your seats are. But some of these some of these sites like Viagogo don't do that. They don't say where your suits are. It's just oh, it's just a ticket for the show, pay yeah. 150 quid, and you're like up in the rafters, you know, and you can you can hear the clouds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're loud old clouds, right? They're loud old right clouds, around. and yeah, I. It's one of those things, like, it's expensive to have experiences, you know, days out, la di da di da mm. and this is contributing to those expensive shows. I've bought tickets from straight from the source, and they've cost me £55, £60 to go, and they've been more for, like, £80, £90. Pounds. If you go to a gig at, like, the Albert Hall, mm. they're expensive gigs, but they're premium shows. Yeah. But you're paying because, I'm sure, if you go to a venue like that, they have to pay a lot of money for a venue like that. The production costs on something like that is high. Mm. And although, yeah, the artists and everyone involved are going to make a lot of money on that show. Yeah, some Rolling Stones tickets are, you know, 180, 200 yeah. something quid. And anyway, but think about how much people are charged on top of those tickets, you know? Exactly. 500, 600 quid. I, yeah, I, 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 I've, like, I'm always really careful in buying tickets. I often don't buy tickets for, for bands. Uh, I get my girlfriend to do it because she's done it before. Right. Uh, which I hadn't wasn't able to do more recently because I bought her some tickets for a surprise but luckily she doesn't listen to this so she doesn't know um, <laughs> really hope she likes Rick Astley <laughs> so yeah she uh, so I'm always really careful to buy tickets straight from mm. the source yeah and, I think that's the right thing to do but I mean you know and we then, have to be careful there's a minefield here of just saying yeah. don't sell it on then that's that's kind of you know encroaching on your freedoms your freedom of uh, uh, you know to be able to do what, what you I, want with your own if property. I bought tickets to a show and I went oh I can't go but yeah. if there's a law saying I can't resell those tickets those tickets I bought I can't sell them to my mate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I probably will. I could. I no one's going to stop be... me. But if if I post it publicly, people can crack down on on people selling personal tickets. If they exactly. can't do it. It's going to be cracking down more on uh, people that are buying 10, 15 tickets at a time. Uh, at yeah. Thing. And unless you've got a really big group of friends um, who all want to spend, you know, fifty quid a ticket. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to pull the world over our eyes. But anyway, I digress. Uh, you know, uh, what do you guys think? Give us a tweet. We're at Lockabillies, yeah. at Harley C. You can check us out on Facebook and on the Podbean and the iTunes and all that sort of stuff. Give us give us a comment on the YouTube video and subscribe YouTube. if you can. YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, all right. Let's get on like to the six, di six different screens. Um, six, <laughs> hold on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. It's like a dice. Roll the dice on YouTube. So you have a gig coming up. On Friday, I you? have actually. I've got two gigs this weekend. You got Chart Attack live at the Swan in Holbrook on there Friday at go. nine yeah, o'clock. It's gonna be great. Free entry, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Looking forward to this one. Um, Hit it's a thriller. A, uh, the thriller. Live. Thriller. Yeah. So we're gonna be playing that live. We've got a few other new songs as well. Some real uh, Where else absolute then? gems, which will be great. Uh, so check those out. Um, uh, and come see us. We will be out keeping them to the set in our where, upcoming where else gigs. Playing, uh, this Saturday, I'm also playing down the Cork with Oddball and the Shifty Twins. That's it's our first gig for a little while, so we're really looking forward to nice. getting on that. We, uh, we're we're getting together tomorrow yourself. night. It's so um, be great. Yeah, nice one. Uh, elsewhere, we've got Elephant in the Room uh, going to be playing with False Colors, James Morgan oh, at the great. Smokehouse uh, uh, this Friday at seven o'clock. I think that'd be a great, great one. He's got Fern Tether and Sam Thurlow with him, isn't he? Yes, so, yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's the. Uh, it's they also are Phil the Green that I used to I used to jam with at Planet of Music. So. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I've also got him saved on my phone as Philicus Greenicus. Philicus Greenicus, because he does look like Caesar, doesn't he? Um, so <laughs> was it October twenty sixth? We've got live music from the Frets. Good Yay. friends of mine, Donnie and. Uh, Craig, who play in good rockabilly band, uh, the Black Horse on Ips in Ipswich on Friday night. Check them out. I've been listening to their old album this morning, and yeah, it's fantastic. Sweet. Uh, Don't fret. It's called from 1985, I think. Ooh, I like really that. awesome. Uh, so also uh, October 26th, Halloween at the Golf Hotel, the Jackson Co. Bit of Johnny Cash for you Friday at seven at 9:30. Nice. Uh, also October 26th, we've got the Halloween Ball with the band that I want to play the show out with tonight, Surfquake. Three Wise Monkeys in Colchester. There from uh, from Essex. Uh, and they are a sick band. They're sort of like um, 
just crazy surf music like Mizzaloo and uh, uh, but uh, yeah you'll like the last one it's a it's a it's a it's a cover of the monsters theme tune. oh so it's halloweeny yeah halloweeny all right Ooh. october 27th we've got wonderful uh, uh jamie from sunscream is going to be playing his new ep big red lazy sun that's going to be the launch party at vinyl hunter in Bury st edmunds that's this saturday so yeah check that out that i've uh, i've heard some great things about that EP. I've nice already heard one. the last EP, which is great. So, yeah, check them out. Um, Andy Hopgood is going to be playing with Vanya. Yes. Um, with Mother Funka. Mother Funka. It's great that, that Andy's playing with them. Yeah. It's awesome. Hello Delica. Um, so, that's at the Salutation. That's uh, on Saturday, October 27th. Um, yeah, that'll be a really fun one to get to. So, if you can get down to that one. I'm really... I, I think they've got Gemma Earl on bass as well. Ah. And I was saying that I, I wish I could make it along to that because Gemma's an incredible bass player. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, She's a real performer, and Good. like yeah, that'd be a fun one to watch. So, uh, gonna rock it through these last ones. October twenty sixth and twenty seventh, which is the Saturday, we've got Scarmania six at the Rep. If you like your Scar music, check that out. October twenty seventh, we've got the Halloweener here at the Smokehouse. That's Emily Gray. <laughs> Interesting Times Gang, we've played them on here. The McGregors, In and Out of Sleep, we've played them on here. So that's this Saturday at seven o'clock. Um, October twenty eighth, which is the Sunday, you've got Roma. Yes. And guests at her album launch. Yeah. Uh, is this Sunday at two o'clock at the railway on Foxhall Road. So yeah, check Some that out. Great people playing alongside her with All that. All for charity. Well. She's always doing everything for charity. Yeah. She's yeah, she's I great. Think she's like ra- that. I just said I heard she's raised about five and a half thousand pounds for charity so, so far. And she wants to raise six thousand, so Wonderfully done, Roma. Very young lady. Um, you know, trying to make her way in the music industry uh, and giving it all to, to charity is very, very commendable. Well done. That's awesome, yeah. Uh, also, October 28th on the Sunday, we've got Reb Kappa and Ed Notes. They're going to be here on Sunday at 7 o'clock at the Smokehouse. Um, and that's all I've got for this week. So, Have you, Did you mention Robin's Open Mic Night? I've got a, When's event, that? Uh, this Sunday, uh, October the 28th, um, Robin's Open Robin Mic Dicker. Night at Mannings. So uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't probably. been to an open mic night for a long time. So, so you might check that one out. I might check out. I'm gigging all week and I've got uh, Thursday. I'm at the toll booth in Dedham. It's yep. the beer, Beertopia, their beer festival. So check that out with Pink Shed. Uh, this Friday I did have a gig, but it's been cancelled. Um, so so I'm going to find something else to do. Saturday uh, I've got, I'm recording with Goofa Dust all day. Nice. And then I've got a wedding in the evening. And then Sunday I'm playing in Somerset for a fancy art gallery's Halloween do. So cool. that's going to be fun. I'm but, really looking forward to my uh, tomorrow because I'm doing filming a video shoot with Chart Attack. Um, oh, great. So we'll talk about that next week. Yeah, that's That'll a great, great idea. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Hopefully topless. Uh, so for the rest of, of you wonderful people, check us out uh, on YouTube, on iTunes, uh, soon to maybe be on Spotify, Acast, all that sort of stuff. Please give us a like and subscribe. Share us on and the thing. And a review if you can. A I review would can. be great. Yeah, yeah. Five stars only. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, go four. Make it realistic. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah make it realistic. Four I don't know two. anyone who has who's had only four star reviews. <laughs> yeah, and if yeah, we exactly. can make that... Cool, that's fine. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Right, ha- ha- happy happy Halloween-ish. Happy ha- Halloween-ish. We'll do another Halloween show next week. But of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'll be more Halloween next week. Tune in it? next week for some more music from Hot Tramp. This song is by Surfquake. This is the Monster theme, Monsters theme. You can check them out this week. We love you. Well, you do. Bye. <laughs>